Have you seen an elephant? Have you seen a tiger? Have you seen a fish? Have you seen an ant? Well, what's all common between them? No, they're not mammals. They are built, made up of cells. Now, cell is a topic that I'm going to be talking about today in biology. And I hope this message helps all my friends out there. Now, let me move on to the discovery of cell. How was cell found? Now, Robert Hooke, an English scientist in 1665, he had a homemade microscope and studied a thin slice of cork. So, what's a cork? It's basically a branch of a dead tree. So, uh, he studied cells with his homemade microscope. He observed the cells were in sort of some sort of box-like compartments. It resembled a honeycomb. And the cells he, of course, observed were dead cells. Now, he coined the term cells regarding to honeycomb because they kind of looked like compartments, as I said. Now, after Robert Hooke observed cells with his homemade microscope, there were also, there were also other microscopes being developed after this, like the compound microscope and the electron microscope. Now, this allowed scientists, since they were very advanced, scientists could observe the cells, the finer structures of the cells, uh, and also put them in great detail. We can compare bricks to cells, since a house or a building or a, sky a skyscraper it's made of bricks. Now, the same thing, a body, a living being is made of cells. That's why it's called the structural unit of life. So, cells also give shape to the human body and other living organisms. Like, my arm is, its shape is due to of cells. My legs is due to of cells. Its shape is due to of cells. My feet is its shape due to cells. Similarly, every part of the body is made of cells, which give its shape. Antony Leeuwenhoek in 1674, he discovered unicellular organisms, rather, he studied unicellular organisms with the advanced microscope, which is the compound microscope. Robert Brown in 1831, he discovered nucleus, one of the important parts of a cell in plant cells. Yes, plants also have cells. We come to Scladen and Swan and Rudolf Virchow in 1838. These scientists formulated the cell theory. Now, what are the two important part points of cell theory? The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. And all cells arise from pre-existing cells only. So if I have a dead cell right here, a new cell will arise from that, it'll come from that. Now I'll be talking about the variations of cells. I'm gonna start off with the number of cells. A shape of a cell, it is derived from the parts of a body and also from the whole entire living being. Also, the number of cells also are derived from how big or how small the living being is. So if it's very small, the lesser number of cells, and if it's big, more number of cells. Makes sense. Now, let's talk about unicellular and multicellular organisms. Now, what are they? So the name really speaks for the cells. So unicellular organisms, like I said, they are made of only one cell, like amoeba and paramecium. So amoeba has one cell and that cell does all the functions, like respiring, capturing, eating, excreting, rep reproducing, etc. Same with paramecium. But multicellular organisms, they have thousands of cells, even millions of cells, like us, whales, and a sponge. 
Now, a sponge has a few thousand cells, and we have, and the whales have millions of cells. Now, each of these cells are specialized to perform a various activity in the body parts. Now, I'm going to be talking about the shape of the cells. Amoeba, being a unicellular organism, has no shape. It has projections called pseudopodia. That means false feet. This allows it for locomotion, feeding, capturing, other activities, etc. etc. Now, let's talk about white blood cells. White blood cells are irregular in shape. That means they can change their shape. They can become very thin and squeeze through the blood capillaries. And now I'm going to be talking about the muscle cells. They are spindle shaped. This allows them to make bundles like group together and it helps them to move together. See, so muscle cells are like individual, but they're just joined together for each movement of my body part. Now, nerve cells. Nerve cells are star shaped. So, and it has a long accent. It's like a string like material. It has a string like shape, like a long accent. And this allows them to transfer and receive messages. So like if I touch something hot, it's going to receive that message that, oh, it's hot. The nerve cells are going to react. Oh, it's too hot through the long accent. Now I'm going to be talking about the size of the cells. So small living organisms like bacteria, their cells are measured in microns, microns. So it's measured in only 0.1 micron to one micron. Plants and animal cells, they have 10 microns to 100 microns. And, and nerve cells are measured in one millimeter to 40 millimeters. You might be thinking, what's the largest cell? It's an ostrich egg. It's measured in 130 millimeters times 170 millimeters. Now, I will be talking about the components of the cell. Now, cells may differ in shapes and sizes, but their components remain the same. It is the cell membrane, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm. Now, what's a cell membrane? It's basically a plasma membrane, which acts like a wall, a mechanical barrier, a boundary. It's the boundary of the cell, which gives it, of course, its shape. Inside it is the cytoplasm and suspended in the cytoplasm is the nucleus. Now cell membrane, it, it uh, kind of allows other kinds of parts to enter and leave the cell. So it's selectively permeable. It doesn't allow everything to come through. Now, it acts as a mechanical barrier, like I said, so it separates its surrounding medium from its inner contents. It also protects it. So it's very good in a way. Now, but what's a cytoplasm? Cytoplasm is a translucent jelly-like substance where the nucleus is suspended in it. Now, cytoplasm, it contains things called cell organelles, like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, all that good stuff. And it actually helps, they are for exchange of material from the cytoplasm and the nucleus. It, the nucleus also has something like that, but I'll get to that later. Now, nucleus, four things. It's made of four things, you have to remember. Nucleoplasm, nuclear membrane, chromatin material, and nucleolus, four things, that's it. Now, nucleus is generally spherical in shape or oval in shape. Now, what's a nuclear membrane? A nuclear membrane is just like the cell membrane. It, it, it separates the contents of the cytoplasm 
from its inner contents. It's a double layered membrane. It has pores, it has pores called nuclear pores. Also for exchange of material, I believe from with the cell organelles and the nuclear pores, of course. But what's nucleoplasm? It's like the cytoplasm, but just inside the nucleus. So it's just a jelly-like substance. Now, what's chromatin material? So chromatin material, it contains a thread-like network. Here and there, individuals are called chromosomes. They contain things called genes. They carry the hereditary information from parents to offsprings. They transfer this type of gene the characteristics from the parents to the offspring. So it's basically containing the characteristics from your mom and dad. Now, what's a nucleolus? A nucleolus is like I think I take it as a nucleus inside of a nucleus so it's a very it's just a dense it's a dense spherical shape and it's associated with ribosomes now ribosomes cell organelles so ribosomes actually create protein synthesis they perform protein synthesis and that's associated with the nucleus so they work together and form all that protein synthesis. So probably when you're consuming your food, it goes to the nucleolus and the ribosomes and they work together and they form protein. Now that's it today. That's part one. It's me signing out.